Hi, my name is Talia. Welcome to Talia Nerds Out. Just want to do a review on the Johnstown Flood. Um, I am taking part in the David McCullough read-along that's supposed to go through uh, sometime in 2026. There's a whole regiment set up by um, things, Elder Talk and um, Book Zealots. So that it's this is their read-along. There's a whole schedule set up for when to read certain books of McCullough's. This is my first time reading any of his books, and I've been intending to read them. Um, I think the first one I picked up was John Adams, although I haven't read it yet. I've heard it's excellent. But this was the first one on the list. This was the read for September. I'm sorry, not for September, for August. This was a very quick read once you get into it. Um, was a little surprised that there were no footnotes or endnotes. I'm not quite used to that. But this was McCullough's first book. I believe he wrote it in the 60s. This flood occurred in 1889. This was a very preventable tragedy. There was, it was a problem in, at points, miscommunication, at points, maybe even a level of arrogance, um, at points, just um, a feeling of false security, even while worrying about it, because, oh, they always say that the dam will break. But it never happened. So uh, people just got kind of lax, got lulled into false sense of security, even though they would always talk about the dam bursting. So this was the South Fork Dam. It was right near the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club, which was basically like a millionaire's, billionaire's kind of club. You had people like Carnegie there. Um, all sorts of big names were involved in this club. Very exclusive. But they trusted in experts who actually weren't as expert as they believed them to be to tell them about what they needed to do to make sure the dam was sound. Now, there were, there, they did have a point where they didn't believe a, an expert on the Johnstown, from the Johnstown, um, from Johnstown itself, but leaned more on their experts, and they really should listen to the Johnstown expert. On the other hand, on Johnstown's end, they um, did get lulled into a sense of, of false security. They were warned by one of the people from the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club. What it looked like there was danger of the dam going. He rode into town saying, hey guys, it looks like the dam might go. Basically, you might want to evacuate. And they didn't recognize him. There was also the potential because he was younger um, that maybe they thought he was pulling a prank or didn't know what he's talking about and no one listened to him. So... Who knows how many lives might have been saved if he had been listened to. Um, and that was, hold on, his name. Yeah, it was Park. Uh, John G. Park Jr. And he just wasn't believed, which is a shame. I, I do wonder how many lives could have been saved. Um, this was not the book that I was looking forward to the most. Um, I really, natural disasters aren't necessarily something I would choose to read if it wasn't for this read-along. Um, but David McCullough really does get to the heart of the personal stories here. You have young Gertrude who, honestly, it's crazy that she survived, um, just some of the stories of people who survived and how some of those personal touches in here are pretty amazing because there were people who were still alive who were at least children 
or even young teens when David McCullough was writing this book, so he was able to interview some of them. There were other people who kept important documents, either because they were related to somebody or because they had always been interested. So he was close enough in time that he really had a lot of sources available to him. So we do have the thoughts and feelings of some of the people who were involved here, which is pretty crazy. Um, but um, another thing that I really appreciate in this book is I actually didn't know, I didn't expect uh, to find Clara Barton and the Red Cross here, even though I should have because she was involved in the Civil War. But this was the really first really big um, natural disaster, really big um, tragedy that she and the Red Cross were challenged by. Um, so I really, I ended up coming away from this book with a huge respect for her. There was an interesting quote for her where, um, let's see, here we go. She seemed to be, every, okay, so first of all, it says that this was um, their first major disaster the Red Cross had, had dealt with. Um, and it seemed for um, the people among, okay, there seemed to be little doubt that except for Hastings, this was, uh, I believe it was General Hastings, he was highly involved in managing the aftermath of the tragedy, but it seemed let little doubt that except for Hastings, she was the best known among the people of Johnstown of all the outsiders in hand, and, the, and certainly the one who would be remembered the longest. She stoutly proclaimed that the Red Cross was here to stay as long as there is work to do. We are always the last to leave the field, she said. She seemed to be everywhere at once, bouncing through the streets in a buckboard, scrutinizing the way things that were being handled whether she had anything to do with them or not. On one such ride, she was accompanied by an Episcopal priest who was afraid that she would be jolted to pieces and told her so. Oh, this is nothing, she shouted back, so long as we have no bullets flying around us. So tough lady. I, if I don't have a book on her, and I'm pretty sure I do on Kindle, I need to read about her at some point because she sounds like she's something else. Oh, and the final thing that I got out of this, it's, and I, also, I actually found a used version of this book. One of the survivors was named Victor Heiser. He was a uh, teenager, and he was one of the survivors. He ended up leaving Johnstown, going to medical school, and he eventually became a public health officer and a physician and he wrote a best-selling book of his experiences as a physician, An American Doctor's Odyssey. So it looks like it's going to be really good. I have that coming in. Really look forward to reading that. It kind of makes me think of the other book that I have, but set earlier. I have the one about the World War II doctor, um, George Washington... I can't remember the last name because um, Klein, Clift, I think it's Klein. Um, I have his books on World War uh, II, his experiences as a physician there. Now I will have this one that's a, not, it's like um, after the Civil War, so post-Victorian, maybe we're even headed toward World War I depending the year of when he wrote this. So I really look forward to reading his book as well. So this was a bit of a, a surprise for me. I wasn't sure what I would think about it because of the topic matter. Um, I enjoyed as much as you can enjoy a book about this kind of tragedy. There are, I think I counted, let's see, um, how many pages of... 15 pages of casualties in here, approximately, which is just the saddest thing it 
um, they ended up counting up the number of dead and it came out to 2,209 and that's only the confirmed dead. There might have been more bodies of people that, would, that passed. There also might have been people who after the flood decided just not to come back and di disappeared um, into new lives. So it's hard to tell how many people more might have died and how many people more might just disappear uh, on their own. So, very, um, like I said, I enjoyed reading this more than I thought I would. The next one that is on the docket is supposed to be um, the one about, I think it's about building the it's Brooklyn Bridge. That's the um, September October read. If it's anything like this one, it should be a pretty quick read. Again, that's a topic that I might not have picked up if not for this read along. So I'm interested in 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 reading that book. I like I said, if I enjoyed his style of writing here, so I look forward to in, uh, reading the next book. Oops, book slided down. Slide is not a word, slid. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, hope that you have a wonderful day, and I will see you for the next video. God bless. Bye.